The Yamaha R3, a bike that literally propelled me from a bikeless bro, much like yourselves watching this video right now, to a guy who's a bit obsessed with motorcycles. Back in 2015, I pulled the trigger on a then new Yamaha R3. It was red and white, and I had loads of fun learning how to ride with it. So naturally, when I had the opportunity to get a 2019 Yamaha R3 as part of our beginner bike giveaway series, I was extremely excited to see what Yamaha had done with the platform, and if it would still have the same charm that my original R3 had. This new R3 allows itself more wiggle room than its rival, the KTM RC390, a bike we also owned before. It's better looking than a Ninja 400 and has more power than a CBR300R, and it gives new riders the look of a super sport without any of the risk. It's a motorcycle that's going to allow you to truly learn the craft of riding, and in short, it's a perfect tool for aspiring riders to get familiar with motorcycling. But that doesn't mean it's a perfect bike. The Yamaha R3 has its faults, sure, and we're going to get into them for this video. Even though I have a soft spot for these bikes, I'm going to try to be as objective as possible. There's quite a lot to talk about here for the R3, so sit back, relax, and we'll walk through this bike in great detail. Right, and of course, I should mention and explain, so I do currently own this black R3 that you see in this video. I've had it for about two months and have done nearly 300 miles with it. It's part of our beginner bike giveaway series that I do here on the channel, so I'm giving away this R3 in mid-October of 2019. If you're watching this in the future, I've probably got some other bikes up for grabs. Click those links if you want to learn how you can win this bike and get started. You can sign up on Patreon to support the series on a per-episode basis with a cap. You can get some merch to get entered to win, or simply send me a letter following the instructions on Patreon and it'll get entered to win for free. Now, let's jump in. To understand the R3, we'll have to go back in time a little bit. Not long ago, the small displacement category was a wasteland. The only real offering for consumers in the USA was the Ninja 250. Ugh. For years, this was your beginner bike. It was ugly, slow, and Kawasaki had been making them for a decade the exact same way. No one was really stepping up to the plate to shake things up. Honda entered the fold in 2011 with the CBR250R, and Kawasaki took notice. They didn't want Honda encroaching on their tried and true formula for small displacement bikes. Kawasaki stepped up to the plate and made the Ninja 300. Had updated styling, a larger engine, it was a beginner bike you could actually be proud to own. Little did they know, other manufacturers were watching and taking note. All of a sudden, starting in late 2014 and into early 2015, there was a veritable explosion of small displacement motorcycles arriving in showroom floors in America. KTM got the Duke 390, the RC 390, Honda bumped their own CBR 250R to a CBR 300R, and one very cheeky 321cc slap in the face of the Ninja 300, the Yamaha R3. You gotta hand it to Yamaha, they did Kawasaki dirty by fitting a 321cc engine instead of a 300cc, and I guarantee you that short up some sales for them when the beginners were cross shopping these bikes, but we'll get into the specs a little bit later in this video. All you need to know for this history section is that the Yamaha R3 started production in 2015 and there's been an absolute explosion of beginner bikes on the market. A fact you might not know about the R3 is that it's Yamaha's number one best selling bike in America. Yep, here in the USA, the Baby Super Sport is their number one seller. Given that the bike has become a number one seller for the brand, they know it's important to get a few things right. Number one, you gotta keep up with your competition. Number two, you don't let the bike get too long in the tooth. And number three, you don't alter the winning formula too much. The last thing Yamaha wants is for Kawasaki, KTM, or even Honda to swoop in and steal sales away from them. I'm not even gonna include Suzuki since the baby 250 they make is a joke. Let's be honest here, guys. They joined the fight in 2017 with a 250cc bike. What were they thinking? So, Yamaha carefully and thoughtfully updated the R3 for 2019, which is the model we're reviewing today. I won't be covering all the differences between the first gen and the second gen R3. If you want, I made a video on this exact topic, you can check it out. But for now, let's jump into the specifications of this motorcycle. The Yamaha R3 has an MSRP of $5,000, 5300 if you want ABS. We got ours for the Beginner Bike Giveaway Series right around 5400 out the door with tax, title, and license fees. It features a liquid-cooled 321cc parallel twin engine, making a lovely A2 compliant 42 horsepower and about 22 foot-pounds of torque. The engine is exceptionally smooth and revs happily to 12,500 RPM, which gives you baby MotoGP feelings without the insane top-end rush of an R6, for example. Up front, you get a single-disc braking system, which we need to discuss later on, a 37mm upside-down forks, which is a real treat in this class, and adjustable preload monoshock at the rear. 
The R3 wears skinnier tires than you're going to see on a real super sport, but because there's so many great options for riders in this category nowadays, you won't have any trouble finding sticky tires in its size. The R3 wears 110 70-17s up front and 140 70-17s out back, but you can probably plus size to a 150 out back if need be. I did this to my R3 that I owned. All important for this category of motorcycle is the seat height of 30.7 inches, a respectable low number that should make this bike accessible to loads of people. People. I am 6 foot tall with a 32 inch seam and I have a bend in my knee when I flat foot it. Also very important, the R3 weighs just 368 pounds. If you're coming from a larger displacement motorcycle, you're really going to feel that weight difference. To give you an idea, a 2019 R6 weighs 419 pounds, which is 51 pounds heavier. That's a discrepancy you're really going to feel. So how do these specs translate for a newer rider? This is about as good as it gets for a new rider. There's plenty to enjoy and have fun with here, but not enough to get into any serious trouble. This isn't to say you shouldn't treat the bike with a healthy dose of respect, because if you ride any motorcycle without thinking about what you're actually doing, it's gonna buck you off. Even a Grom will launch you if you whiskey throttle it, which makes me wonder, has anyone high-sided a Grom? Because that would be amazing. As a new rider, the R3 is rewarding to ride. You'll appreciate how the throttle is forgiving and the upmarket specs on this bike make it more future-proof than the last model. This certainly won't be the last bike you own, but it could be your gateway into track days if you decide to keep it, or as could be a wonderful commuter. For the experienced rider, the R3 is just an absolute blast. You can ring the thing out to redline constantly with virtually no consequences. It flicks in quickly given its light weight, and the components feel way nicer than they have any right to. If you're to place someone in the cockpit of this bike who didn't know what it cost and ask them to look around, it easily feels like an eight or $9,000 motorcycle. It's really that good. Moving on from that, what's my own opinion about the R3? The R3 is an outstanding tool to understand the basics of motorcycling. I think if you're interested in becoming a sport bike rider, learning the tools of the trade, and eventually getting on the track, the R3 is your gateway drug. This new generation is slightly more aggressive than the last one, both in ergonomics and in appearance, which will make the transition to a 600cc motorcycle much easier. It's still going to be a jump. Going from an R3 to an R6, for example, is going to feel crazy. Trust me, the first time you ride a sport bike, you won't believe how fast they actually are. But it's an excellent start starting point. The R3 really rewards you for precise inputs, choosing your lines and carrying momentum through corners and becoming a better rider. Even for myself, I've ridden probably over a hundred different bikes, done track days with loads of different bikes. There's times I'm hustling the R3 through corners and the bike almost seems to ask me, can't you go a little bit quicker through there? It doesn't goad you the same way a leader bike might, where a thousand cc bike grabs you by the neck and commands you to go quicker, and as you twist the throttle, the power is literally intoxicating and you wanna go faster and faster. The R3 style is to simply ask you in a gentle way, hey, I think you could carry a little bit more speed through that corner. Try it again when you go back up the hill. It's a friendly little bike, despite its racer replica looks. Some downsides of this machine are those damn turn signals. I know it's a minor complaint and some LEDs and an hour in the garage fixes it, but I really hate that Yamaha put those ugly turn signals on there. Another complaint I have with the bike is the excessively long throttle tube. It takes 50% more input to get to full throttle as compared to other sport bikes. Again, it's an easy fix, get an R6 throttle tube and swap it out, but it's not the most fun thing to use. And the last complaint I have with this machine are those wooden brakes. Look, I get it. It's a $5,000 motorcycle. It's not going to have precision top end braking components, but my God, can we please get something with better fuel from the factory? Again, an easy fix. You'll just need to swap the pads, maybe the fluids as well, but it sucks not having proper brakes from factory. And finally, how does the R3 compare to its rivals? Well, I've ridden several of the R3's rivals, but I've not owned all of them, so we're going to be comparing stats and price points mostly. Let's see. First up, it's impossible to talk about the R3 and not the Ninja 400. Now, I've voiced my disdain for the 400 plenty of times, but let's keep it objective here. The Ninja 400 is priced the same as the R3, but comes with 399 cc's of parallel twin fun. Although, if power is the only thing you're chasing, you're better off taking that same money and buying a used FC07 or a 650, so I think the argument is a bit cheap, no pun intended. The Ninja 400 doesn't have the same upside down forks like the R3 does, it doesn't have the same nice LED dash, and honestly, it just doesn't look as cool. For my money, I'd have the R3 any day. The RC390 is also second to the R3 for several reasons. Luckily, I owned an RC390 briefly for our other giveaway series, so I have more experience with this baby race bike. But simply put, the R3 is a more well-mannered everyday bike. 
The RC really does feel like a proper little race machine. It's buzzy, the build quality is a little suspect, but boy it flicks in quick and it's a riot to ride. The R3 is a much more put together package and jumping on them back to back shows you how the R3 feels like a much more grown up motorcycle. The RC390 is a scalpel for carving up tracks and not riding every day in my opinion. The CB300R, Honda's new Neo Retro Beginner Bike offering is a great option for new riders as well. It looks cool, has a nice amount of poke and will allow anyone to have fun with it, but when comparing to the R3, I think the R3 is a better bike still. It's got better looks, nicer suspension components, a nicer dash, and it's going to allow you to level up to a bigger bike more easily. So tying it all back, the R3. It's a beginner sport bike rider's dream. What more could you want? We truly live in the best timeline where bikes that look this good are affordable, appropriate, and accessible to new riders. The R3 is a wonderful bike that can teach you everything you need to know about riding and then some. So that's gonna wrap up today's full review on the bike. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Remember, this specific R3 is being given away, so click the links below to learn how you can get started to win it. If you're watching this way later in the future, still go and check out those links below because we're probably giving away even more cool bikes that you can win. Thanks again for watching. Tune in next time. I'll see you later.